Hey everyone, this is our lesson on covalent bonding and by the end of this lesson you should be able to infer the type of chemical bond that occurs. Um, we're going to focus on covalent today since we've already learned about ionic and metallic. <coughs> Excuse me. So covalent bonding is where atoms share electrons. So remember ionic is a full transfer of electrons, metallic is that sea of electrons, and covalent is sharing electrons. Um, and just some terms you need to know here. So like a molecule, when we refer to that, is a neutral group of atoms joined together by one or more covalent bonds. So this is where we've got sharing of electrons. We look at the word molecule. For ionic compounds, we look at the word compound or formula unit, but you don't really have to know that one so much. So the attractions between your shared electrons and the protons of each nucleus of the atoms in that bond are what hold the elements together. And a covalent bond is usually formed, and for you guys always formed, between two or more nonmetals. So some examples here are H2O, so water, carbon monoxide, and carbon dioxide. So as you see here, um, these two atoms were floating around. They had two that weren't partnered or didn't have buddies. They form a partnership, and that's a covalent bond because now they're being shared between the two. It was not a transfer. So most covalent compounds are solids or gases at room temperature. So that should tell you right now that compared to ionic and metallic, these would be the weaker of the three um, because they are in more loose states at room temperature. Um, most of them, I will say, are gases. I'm pretty sure this should say liquids. I think I have that wrong. So most are liquids or gases at room temperature, not solids. So you might want to fix that. Liquids. Okay. So the covalent compounds that are solids, so the ones that are, there are some, but the ones that are solid tend to have very low melting points, so they will melt very easily. Um, so they might be solid at room temperature, but not for long, like raise the temperature two degrees and it will melt. <coughs> and they do not conduct electricity. So these are used more as like insulators and stuff. Many nonmetals exist in nature as what's called diatomic molecules, which are two atoms of the same element covalently bound together. So uh, sometimes these are referred to as diatomic elements because they're two identical elements together. I talk about these as like the socks of the periodic table because they naturally come as a pair. And... Here's our list of so fluorine, oxygen, hydrogen, bromine, chlorine, iodine, and nitrogen. And I will show you in class a little trick with these um, to mark them on your periodic table. So here's nitrogen, so N2. And N2 has, each nitrogen has three um, electrons that are not buddied up. So you buddy them between the two nitrogens, which is how they covalently bond together. And it's said by one or more co one or more covalent bonds. This one actually has three covalent bonds. Oh, let me clear this off. Okay. So now let's talk a little bit about polarity because that is affected by covalent bonds, not ionic bonds. So in a molecule, atoms that form covalent bonds have the same ability to attract electrons. So I talk about this as like our get along shirt. If you've ever seen pictures of two siblings and they're putting like an extra, extra large t-shirt um, and it says this is our get along shirt because they fight all the time. So they stuff them in the same t-shirt. Um, that's what I say like uh, covalent bonds are like because they're having to share the same space. But sometimes atoms are going to Atoms in that bond may have a stronger pull on electrons than the other atom, um, which means they are not going to be shared equally. And if they're not shared equally, that is called a polar covalent bond, which means one atom has more of a hold on the shared electrons than the other. So that means it can hold on to them tighter. <coughs> if I were to just give you the elements to look at, 
um, like on the periodic table and say, determine if this is polar. If they're far apart on the periodic table, so at least one element is between them on the periodic table, then that would be a polar bond. The further you get away, the more polar you get until you get into the metals, which would then be ionic bonds. If they are shared equally between the, um, the atoms, or when I say equally, maybe not zero difference, but like, 0.4 or less difference. <coughs> That's known as a nonpolar covalent bond. So these would be the same element or right beside each other on the periodic table. So if they're right beside each other, these are what we always refer to as nonpolar. If they're the same element, so like your diatomics, N2, O2, H2, so two of the same elements, um, these are called nonpolar, but they're also called pure covalent bonds. Okay, <clears throat> because there is absolutely no difference in the pool of electrons. So here's an example. H2O would be considered polar. N2 would be considered nonpolar or pure covalent. So this is a polar bond because you can see one side has more pull on the electrons than the other which is why it's got that negative, slight negative charge. <clears throat> so now that we've gone through this very quickly,